want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Do like Jesus said, search the scriptures and you'll know what is true. Amen. And welcome to the New Year's edition of the What is Truth radio show. Here we are, Sunday, January the 1st, 2023. And I got to tell you, I, I was born in 1954. I thought it was a big deal when we got to the 80s, 1980s. This amazing that we've come this far. And we're with you uh, for the next hour right here on our What is Truth radio show. We want to take a look at giving you some encouragement in this new year. And we're going to get some encouragement in the Word of God. God has good things for us. He says in uh, Psalm 61, verse 2, to Jesus preached, I'm here to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and God wants this year to be acceptable uh, to you. We're sponsored by the Grace and Truth Church, which is a little assembly in western New York, and we know this program goes all over. If anybody does live in the western New York region, love to have you visit us uh, sometime at our little assembly at the Grace and Truth Church. And you say, well, I'm far away. I can't reach you. Well, you can reach us online. Uh, Grace and Truth Church has a nice uh, website. Uh, just spell out the words grace and truth church and make it all one long word, graceandtruthchurch.org. Uh, you'll come to the homepage. The homepage has a, a, a tab called sermons. You click that and there's like five or six different options there's sermon audio, there's good preaching, there's YouTube, there's a number of things that you can do to listen and to uh, visit the work that we do at the Grace and Truth Church. And the purpose of that little church is to preach grace and to do it using the truth. And our little show is one hour every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. It's live to tape. We're taping on a Wednesday, uh, but we're excited because this new year is upon us, and we have our regular panel and a new guest with us today. Of course, I have my good friend and partner in truth, Kevin Deegan, here to my right, and a good friend of ours who's joining us today, who's uh, been on the show just a few times in the past, Teresa D. Pietro. Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year. Good good to have you Happy here. New good morning. Happy and, New Year. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's great. I mean, you, you know, the year has passed. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we made it through. It was a tough year, particularly here in Western New York. The past couple of weeks have been rough. Very tough. For you folks around the uh, mm -hmm. country. I don't know if, if they mentioned it on the news, but we had a, a heck of a blizzard here. I, I remember I lived through the the old one, the blizzard of 77, mm -hmm. which, which was a pretty rough. Uh, and the difference between a blizzard and a regular storm is you not only have snow falling, you have high winds. Yes. What were the winds? They were 40, 50? They, they peaked at 80 miles an hour. Yeah, 80 miles an hour. at some locations. Yeah. There was, I was looking out my window and, and, the, and yeah. the snow was like vertical, just yeah. going yeah. horizontal. Yeah. yeah, I was, yeah. <laughs> when I was out, it was pelting me in the face, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. and it was... What were you doing out in that? Yeah. I, had, I had to go out and clean <laughs> off the uh, high efficiency heaters now, you know, like uh, they... Somebody actually died because it got covered up. And oh, the vents. The vents. The vents on the heaters get covered. Yeah. They don't go up a chimney yeah. anymore. The high efficiency come right out the wall. That's right. And I did the, that a few times, the snow, too. The snow on on my uh, one side of my house is like six foot high. Yeah. So, oh, because yeah. it because of the draft coming over the roof. Uh, yeah, the, the, the wind currents blew big drifts yeah. in yeah. various places. Did you get anywhere you were, Teresa? Yeah, not as bad. We got it the next day down yeah. in the South Town. We got it the next day. But you did get but some, it didn't right? Lead, it, we did get enough snow, yes. And it snowed right. and it snowed and it wouldn't stop snowing. <laughs> but I think, honestly, a lot of people learned a lot from this past blizzard because yeah. they now will check their vents and they now know to where a water main has to be shut off. They had to learn that as oh, well. Okay. Yeah, Lots right. of pipes burst, of and they had to learn where that heaters, water main was. No electric. Shut yeah. it right off. No electric. heat. Yep. Yeah. So it, aren't, aren't we all glad it's a new year? It praise went, and praise that's the Lord. Us. That news praise went out Lord. all over the world mm -hmm. because my wife got a text from mm -hmm. a cousin that lives in Italy. Same. And <laughs> said, are you, are you guys okay? <laughs> <laughs> Same. From my, my cousin from Italy yep. also messaged me, yeah. asking me if we're okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> so it went out all over the place. Yeah. Well, it should have too. A lot of people Amen. died. Amen. And, 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 and the Sadly. Bible yeah. says it's of the Lord mercies that were not consumed. <laughs> His uh, compassions, they fail not. Uh, great is thy faithfulness. They are new every morning and they're going to be new in this new year. And, and you know, one of the things that I find the good way to start the year off is to start it off with uh, the Lord. Yeah, amen. And to spend some time in mm -hmm. God's word and to let to God uh, feed us. I remember before I knew the Lord, mm -hmm. before I had found the uh, truth, I would every so often make a New Year's resolution, but it wouldn't last that long. <laughs> it lasted a few weeks. Yeah. And, uh, I noticed the exercise in the gym uh, advertisements are yeah, uh, yeah. out now, you know, in the, oh, all yeah. over the place. Absolutely. Yeah. January Newspapers must be a good and, month for them. People. Oh, yeah. Everybody like, signs up in January probably, and quits it's in it's February. That's probably their biggest money yeah. month. <laughs> that's probably the biggest money, the but, biggest money maker. And, and here we are, though, and we want to encourage you in this new year, too, to uh, uh, find greater truth in the word of God. And I'm looking here, I got my, my Bible's open in front of me, Kevin, I see yours is open there. Teresa, why don't you open yours? No, hers is open too. And, <laughs> and uh, always open. We, we've got, we've got our books open and they are big books. And, and what we like to do on this program here is to encourage people to get into the word of God. Now, this is a special show. It's a new year show. Obviously last week was the Christmas show. But before that, we had been doing a number of shows called Highlights from the Word of God, just going through and finding some of the great chapters uh, as, just to share with the audience uh, some of the great truths that God has in His Word. I remember uh, before I started going to church, I didn't know much about this book. How about you, Teresa? None. Not at all. Nope. What? You, now, you grew up, did you have any religion growing up at all? I grew up in Catholic. I have a Catholic background. My mom and dad made sure we were in church every week. Okay. I remember watching Davy and Goliath. <laughs> I don't oh. remember much about Catholic Oh, Davy and church. Goliath. I remember that show. It was like an animated show with clay yeah, puppets with or something. with the claymation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was... I had no interest at all. Okay. I was living life. I had no interest. I just punched in the clock. I went to church. Punched in the clock and left. When you went to the church, you were, now where'd you grow up? What area? East Aurora. In East Aurora. Yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. when you grew up there in East Aurora and you had the local diocese, the church, I assume your mom and dad belonged to and they took you to. Yes. Yeah. Did they give you a Bible at any time? No, they never gave you a Bible. Yeah. I think maybe they gave me a pocket size one when I made my communion, but we never referenced a Bible in our CCD classes or... Um, <clears throat> they would read through it. They would read a little bit of the, the scriptures. I don't know what version um, during church every week, and then they would talk and expound about little it a little white bit. Ones? Yeah, one the of little the little. Oh, I remember the little yeah. white ones. Yeah, 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 I, white one. yeah. I did get that. the communion edition. Yeah. Yes, yes. yeah, the go, communion edition. Yeah, you look at the yeah. the Bibles that are ornate and stuff. I've seen yes. a lot of people with these ornate Bibles, and it's like you could. <laughs> blow the dust off them, yeah, you know? because they no one's on looked into them. Yeah, yeah they but they look nice. The, yeah. Nice decoration at yeah. the house. I never picked up a Bible. Yeah. Ever. I remember we were growing up and I was in Buffalo and uh, we were in the Little Italy section uh, on the east side of Buffalo there, right next to Cheek de Waga. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember they're trying to raise money for the church once. And so they had the official Catholic edition of the Bible that our family bought for probably three times the cost of what it was to make yeah. it. Uh, but we did it because, you know, want to help the church and, and mom and dad bought it and it would sit on the coffee table. But we, we were never encouraged to look into it. Although I did open it, there were pictures in mine. There was pictures <laughs> of Samson and Delilah yeah. and stuff like that. So I enjoyed looking at the picture section, but I never read anything. Wow. And I didn't get, uh, okay, whatever. How did they know what they, they look like? <laughs> An artist's rendering, I guess. <laughs> it's just the imagination. But no, and so when you were growing up, they didn't do with you either. And uh, no. No, and I had no interest. I just did it. Like I said, I was punching in the clock and I would go in and, and then I would miss maybe a couple of months and definitely never miss Christmas or Easter. Um, and I would just get in there and then I'd feel good about myself going in there that one time and then I'd leave again. Yeah. Not a devout, uh, Catholic, not following the doctrine at all. Yeah. You Christmas know? and Easter. Those are the two big ones. The Creaster. Yeah. yeah the, those were the, those are the, the two big ones. I, I had yeah. an uncle, uh, uncle Richie and he, he was, he was something else. And that guy was involved in everything you could just imagine. 
but uh, he never went to church. Uh, now, my mom and dad were pretty devout, and they mm-hmm. went every single Sunday, and they sent me to Catholic school. I had to go every day of the week, plus Sunday with them, and plus Saturday to confession. Did you have to do that, go to the confession I once in a while? I still remember <laughs> dreading confession <laughs> the first time, the reconciliation I had yeah. to do. And I was a little kid, and I thought, I have to, maybe I could just make something up. <laughs> I don't know what I have to tell these yeah, people. What do I, what do I like say? I have to yeah. tell them I did something wrong. Okay, I was fighting with my brother and sisters. Okay, okay, that's that's, okay. <laughs> that's a popular one. That was a popular yeah. one. <laughs> so okay, so I bless you and go over in the I, pew. Then and, I remember and do three I Hail Marys specifically. Yep, yeah, yeah. I specifically remember how many Hail Marys and our fathers I had to say in the pew, and then yeah. my sins would be forgiven. And I literally sat there counting on each finger right. how many times I said it to make sure I did it the exact right, the right amount of times. And then you went out with a clear conscience. <laughs> I don't even know. Because <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I could care less at that age. <laughs> I could care less. I, re- I remember going through that. Yeah. yeah. But but um, no no instruction from the Word of God. None. And, <clears> and I'm, I'm just sorry. thankful None. for me. I was 39 when someone invited me to a Bible study. It was my wife. Praise the get? Lord. You can only say no so many times. Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, and, and then I went and, and thankfully they were, they were studying in the gospel of John. What about you? How did the Lord grab you? Oh my goodness. I, oh, it was because my husband was mayor in East Aurora at the time. They were trying to kick out uh, church in the park, the neighbors around the church in the park, and they were trying to kick them out. So he decided to go to bat for them and say, all right, Four weeks, I'm going to um, measure the noise in a decimal meter oh. and see if this is, you know, legit. Should we Who kick was out holding church in the park? The church that we went to for 10 years after I got saved. Oh, it was an evangelical church. It was an evangelical church. So it was church. a Jesus gospel believing church. It was a gospel believing church. Okay. Yes. And it yes. was way down in the park, too, wasn't it? It was in the park, yes. But it was way down yeah, in right the park. Yeah, right where the stage is yeah. and everything is. So it wasn't down even a hill. near the house. Right. It's not bothering it's not anybody. Near the house. Right. It wasn't even near the house. So he measured the yeah. noise. And um, so the four after the four weeks, I said, Dave, I want to start going to this church regularly. Well, I did. I started going. I jumped right in. Uh, the Lord was drawing me. That's all I have to say. It's all the Lord. Amen. He was drawing me. He knew I was interested. He knew I was starving. He knew I had a desire to understand who he was. And by God's grace, he gave that to me. And I ended up in a Bible through the year study because at first I picked up a, a Bible. I picked up an NIV Okay. and I would pick it up. I'd read it and I'd put it down. And two years later, I was still halfway, only halfway through Genesis uh-huh. Literally just trying to read through the Bible and through the scriptures. But, but you were going to the services. But I was going every week to church. And I at, was listening to the sermons. And and at the sermon, usually yeah. the pastor, he's taken some time to take a portion of the scripture to read through it and then try and Absolutely. present it. Yeah. Yes. W- were you Amen. saved at that time? I don't think I was saved at that time. I yeah. think I really believe I got saved Reading the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Oh, amen. Well, and I literally and fell in love with Jesus. You weren't getting anything from I wasn't the scriptures anything. because yeah. you're, the Bible says you're spiritually discerned. Right. You're spiritually dead. You can't. And these words, mm. they are spirit and they are life. They're, yeah. The words written in here are living words. Yeah. And you have to have the Spirit of God to understand them. So if you didn't have that. Right. When I got saved, yeah. after I got saved, mm-hmm. I never read the Bible before that. But when I read the Bible, I was already saved, and it it it, it was alive to me. Sure, I knew but this God was is the word of God. You. He spoke yeah. to me. Yeah, you know, like I, I was uh, thinking of this verse, like Jesus said to the Jews who believed on Him, not to the unbelievers, but to the believers. If you continue in My word, then you are My disciples indeed. If you continue in uh, uh, the canons or some, you know, religious book or tradition or, or something else, yeah, yeah. whose disciple are you? Right, you're the disciple you of whoever this wrote that. Word, you're the his disciple. Correct. If you continue in my in word, my Jesus word. Said, yeah. So, um, and he said, "My sheep hear my voice," and I believe I oh. heard his voice. I didn't hear an audible voice, but I knew this was the Word of God. Nobody had to tell me this was the Word of God. (laughs) Nobody had to tell me the King James was the Word of God. I knew right away. I was 17 years old. I knew right away this is the Word of God. Part of the reason is because of the things said in here. I'm like, oh, 
But the wages of sin is death. I'm like, that's this guy right so, here. So let me ask you. So when you were 17 yeah. and, and you were introduced to biblical evangelical Christianity, somebody put a King James Bible in your hand. I uh, I don't know that they, uh, my mom bought my first Bible. Okay. And I read that Bible religiously. Was it King say. James? It was a King James. There you go. So what a blessing. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and the way I got saved was hearing a gospel preacher preach the gospel. And he was talking about the wages of sin. And I'm like, I'm serious. I'm like, that's this guy. Mm-hmm. Right. I knew who he was talking about. You knew about. like God was this speaking right to here. you. Yeah. This, this is this guy. So because that's the first thing that that God's spirit will do with someone. Jesus told the men at the Last Supper, he said, you know, when I send the spirit of truth into the world, he will convince the world of sin. And that's that's what he does. He 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 speaks to the sinner because Christ said, I came to call sinners, sinners. To, repentance. to repentance. Yeah. Yeah. And and if if a person can't admit they're a sinner, then Christ can't save them. I'm right. not here to call the righteous. He right. said, "I'm yeah, here to call." That's sin. John 16. He said, "Yeah, to reprove the world." Yes, right. But of sin, because they believe not on Him. Right. Mm-hmm. Because they didn't believe the sin that 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 God is interested in is you're not believing. Your unbelief right. is the sin. Not all these other things that are are maybe you're engaged in. Um, God, until God, I believe that until God changes your heart, yes, that's not going to stop that stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, that's so right. You like need a new heart. And, and here year, we are yeah. n- talking about New Year's. That's one of the new things God has mm-hmm. is a new heart for people. Yeah, to give someone a a, a new heart because the old yeah. heart, the one all three of us that were born with, and I don't, I'm not talking medically speaking. As a doctor, I know we have a heart with the four chambers, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But but he's talking about the heart that moves our soul and our spirit, the 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 desires of the heart inside of us that make us do the things we do, that make us begin to love certain things. That old heart is bent toward the world. Yes. It's bent toward <clears throat> the, the, the flesh and the things the flesh likes and the certain indulgences and, and lust and... And a lot in those things, God defines as sinful when you indulge in and overindulge in those it, things. Is it the book of Ezekiel where right God here. talks about the a new heart, stony heart? 36. And that I will 26. give you a flesh. Go ahead. Do you have that verse? Yeah, yeah. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh. That's interesting. The stony heart. Yes, yeah. stony heart. When when I was uh, younger, before I got saved, I, I, I was a musician, and uh, there was these musicals coming out on Broadway, and one of them had a song about how can people be so hard, and talking about you know you you can yeah you talk about the the people you don't know with all these glowing words, but then the people you do know you just turn away one of your friends. There's something about the natural heart that is hard and stony, like you were saying. Yeah, absolutely. We see it sometimes with friendships that get broken. We see it with marriages that get broken. I mean, how is it that that a boy and girl that that are in love at one point, and that'll happen, oh boy, she's just the one for me, oh, and I love him. And you know, they're at the malt shop, I'm dating myself, how old? And and they're they're both drinking out of the same thing with two straws and and they're real close. And then a year later, they're not talking and they're angry. What happened there, that stony heart? Well, you can't get through to that stony heart, right? Once that stony heart is there between two people, it's very hard, right? to, To fix that relationship once Somebody shuts down at one side or the other or both sides. Right. But what about a stony heart towards God? That, and that's what I was What gonna, about yeah, a stony very heart? Good, very so good. My wife that passed away at the end of the 20th century. I was just thinking about that. That's weird, 20th century. But yeah, uh, <laughs> we, we Cheryl, made it through it, guys. Cheryl, <laughs> actually, that she loved that verse. <clears throat> yes. And when she got baptized, she, was, she got baptized in the lake, uh, Lake Ontario. Not, not Lake Erie, because I lived in Rochester. She got baptized in the lake, and when she came out of the water, she found a stone that looked just like a heart. Oh. And she saved that thing and put it in with all her 
stuff. <laughs> but it, it meant something to her because she had a stony heart. You know, like if you would talk to certain people about God, it's like, no, no, I, oh, not no, interested. Get, yeah, right, get, right. get that Bible away from me. Right. You know? Or like the thing you were saying, I, mm-hmm. no, we don't want this in the park. They mm-hmm. weren't bothering anybody. Mm-hmm. They're just down there doing their thing. Yes. And it's like, yeah, by the and way, you have such a stony heart that they can't practice. Right. They, they're, not, they're not chasing people down. I right. was just wondering. I, I'm pretty sure I know that area in East Aurora where mm-hmm. there's that thing in the center of the park. And yeah. like, don't they have like occasional uh, people go play guitar there or Absolutely. a little folk festival yeah. or something? Lots like, of where, where people yeah, complaining about that, wanting to shut not that down? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Never complained about those. I, I got other video. Things. I got video here in Buffalo. Yeah. One of the guys was preaching. We were preaching at a. Per, a parade thing i'll just say yeah and they had a tractor trailer with speakers as high as the roof you know uh-huh. i mean it, the sound pressure your shirt would vibrate right <laughs> sure. and the, sure. and one of our guys had a megaphone and he was preaching and the officer came over i got video of this it's hilarious because the <laughs> officer is shouting at him and he's shouting back what I can't hear because you. Of all and it's the like, rock yeah, you can't have out. that megaphone here. Mm-hmm. And there's all this noise going on, you know. And it's like that's if we're going to shut oblivious. one guy down, it's the guy right. speaking the gospel. Yeah, they're they're yeah. oblivious to that, but, yeah. and that's happened many times. It happened yeah. used to happen in Rochester too. You're yeah. standing there at a rock concert, and oh, we have noise. We have a noise ordinance. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> really, it's amazing. I mean, yeah. that's how my ears were. My heart was stony. Yeah, I would come across a radio station that had a sermon going on. I'd shut that thing off as fast as yep. I could. Yep. And now I crave it. Now I seek it out. You know what I mean? Just sermons. I don't even listen to music anymore. Yeah, I, I, I know a, a guy in Rochester. He used to uh, flip around driving to work. Yeah. And uh, he got saved. One day he was driving down the highway, Lake Ontario State Parkway, going to work. And he's flipping through and he got Perry Rockwood. The, oh, oh he's great. A yeah. great preacher. That's great. And he pulled over to the side of the road. <laughs> yeah. And he got saved right there in his car. Yeah. Yes. Listening to that. They still give him but, 15 minutes no. at night. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Our listener. <laughs> nine to nine fifteen. Perry that's F. Rockwood. It. Let, let yeah. us recommend him to you. Now, now he's home with the Lord. He was yes. a, one of the great preachers of the 20th century. Just phenomenal. A humble, sweet, God loving man who loved God and loved God's word. And he did a number of messages. And like you said, they're short. They're just 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Not like us. We, we, mm-hmm. we bore you for an hour. <laughs> 15 <laughs> minutes. But he, he's just terrific. So Perry F. And the last name is Rockwood. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, just if you can find some of his stuff, you'll get a great blessing from him. He loved the Lord. That's all it would take is about 10 minutes of listening to him. He gives a lot oh, of yeah, great... He always, because there's a radio ministry, yeah. always <laughs> preaches the gospel on yeah, radio ministry. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing so. because the Lord works through the ear and the, you know what I mean? Faith and, uh, cometh by hearing. Hearing. And, yeah. uh, you know, and it's almost like he fine tunes our hearing as far as listening to sermons and listening to the word of God. And you can turn something off that's just not quite right there. But that Perry F. Rockwood, oh, as gosh. soon as I, I started listening to him, and within a minute, I'm like, oh, this guy's got it. You I know what I mean? And, my, and I'm sorry, <laughs> not everybody has my, it these days. And I voice. just weed that out. You're, you heard the voice. I hear that voice that and voice, I listen. Right? Yeah. And, and then when you... You know, I open up the Book of Mormon and I read it. I'm like, this yeah. is a stranger. This oh, is not oh, the yes, voice of the Lord. Amen. You know? Exactly. So, and, and I, I read open the, up I read a different the other version. Bu- versions. Yeah, and, it's I, like, and I feel the same is, way this now. This is a strange book. Yeah. Yeah. This is not yeah. the Word of God. Oh, and I hate to say I feel the same way. I believe the same way you do as far as so, so let me just the right see, so, word of God. So as we're talking to the people in the new year, I mean, yeah. our great desire for folks is to get that new heart yes. that, you were, that God was speaking about in the book of Ezekiel there. Yeah. And if you get a new heart, then you're going to begin to read what would be to you as a new book, because I don't know if there's any of us that have kind of picked up a Bible. I, I know I didn't before, before salvation. Saved, right? You didn't pick one up. No, I didn't. They didn't give me one in school, not mm-hmm. high school, not college, mm-hmm. not professional school. Nobody gave me a Bible. Curious thing is I went to a Catholic college yeah. and they didn't give me a they Bible. What was, a Bible. They told us uh, part of the elective requirements is you have to take a philosophy or a language, but nothing about mm-hmm. having to take a mandatory religion or, and even in the religious classes, no Bibles were given out. Right. Well, they restricted right. Bibles. They didn't even print an English Bible <clears throat> until uh, I believe the late 16th century. 
right. Holy Ghost Bible. So before that, they had the Vulgate in Latin, mm. right? Yes. But uh, but it was restricted to the clergy, right? It right. Wasn't recommended to people. In fact, you were not supposed to read it because they actually say in their canons that if you try to interpret these words, yes, you have a petulant spirit. <laughs> a petulant <laughs> yes, spirit. Yes, that's what the can- that's what it says. <laughs> that's a nice word. Yeah. They well, use the lawyer to come up with that? <laughs> probably. <laughs> no, but it's, you know, it's like uh, you, you, if you try to read the word of God mm-hmm. and you try to interpret it, you ha- you can only go by the, the interpretations of the church. The official. The official interpretations. I think there's about seven of them. That's it. Okay. There's seven official interpretations of spe- specific scriptures that are official. Yes. That's it. Just seven. You know, it's and yet, and yet the God said to Isaiah, tell the people to seek ye out of the the book book of the Lord and and read. read. That's what he told them to do. I mean, 34, 16. That's, that's the verse. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He told the, um, the king was to write himself a copy. That's correct. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I find I can, I can read books and understand things, but when I actually, you know, why do we do homework? Mm-hmm. When I actually, well, I always, I always use the example of working on a car. I can read on how to fix a car. Yes. I can read all the books in the world. Yes. But I'm not going to really know how to fix a car until I take one apart and put it back together. That's right. The experience is a big teacher. So when we, when we, you know, these kings would write the word of God down. There, there's something about that too. Not yes. just taking it in. Well, or when we verbally tell other people. Absolutely. Right? When we quote scripture, absolutely. when you're talking to somebody, you know, people will say, Well, how do I witness? I don't know how to witness. It's like, well, give me your testimony for one. Sure. But take some scriptures like these scriptures right here and quote them to people. And you'll find that there's something about that. We're we're commanded to I, commit the word of God to our memories yes. in the scriptures yes. too. And, and the reason that works is, I mean, it works medically when we were in medical school and they were teaching us, you know, how the brain is laid out and the cerebellum and the cerebrum and, and all the different parts of it and, and the corpus callosum and how things speak one to another and communicate one with another. Different parts of the brain are activated by different senses. So when I read, I'm just activating, you know, this part back here. But when I speak, I'm activating this part over here. And when I write, I'm activating this part over here. So they would tell us, if you really want to learn your lessons, you, you not just listen to what the professor says, go home and write out some of the things he says and speak them. And now you're engaging more of your brain. So when you are sitting at that test, you have three or four different areas to draw from. So it makes yeah. sense medically too. And now we're almost at the end of the first half of the show. And again, we're wishing you all a happy and a new year, but I always like to put on my cards, I want you to have a blessed new year. God wants to give you blessings, and he's the only one that can. And in this new year, you want the compassions and the mercies and the faithfulness and the portion of the Lord, and you will get that if you allow him into your heart to give you a new heart. Stick around. After a word from our sponsor, we'll be right back for the second half of what is want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Do like Jesus said, search the scriptures and you'll know what is true. Amen. Welcome back to the second half of the January 1st, 2023 New Year's edition of the What is Truth radio show. Uh, Thanks for uh, being with us. We hope you spent a lot of time with us uh, this uh, new year. And what we're going to do this New Year's, we're going to spend a lot of our time in the old book. And uh, uh, Teresa, you were telling us that Amen. as you were being drawn by God into hearing the gospel, because uh, your husband was the mayor mm-hmm. of East Aurora, and they were having some complaints about a, a young evangelical church that was holding services in the park. Yep. They, oh, they were saying they were too noisy, but they right. really weren't noisy. It was a right. kind of a fake complaint. They were able to continue on with it. And we continued on until the church ended up um, closing, but another church took over. But anyway, what got to me was, this is this is for the listener, the believer and the non-believer, if you want to pick up this book. But um, I was, I started with a Bible through the year study. 
And a group of our church met in the basement before church on Sundays, and we would do a study. And a certain uh, three people were leading it, and each person would take turns. Each week, another person would lead it. So we had to read a, a book a week. So I'm here. I am reading Genesis Whoa. in one week. Whoa, you know, Exodus in the next week. Reading. Every week, wow. right? <laughs> so this was me tediously going through it. Yeah. No spiritual stuff here at all. I didn't think so. And I'm like, how many more, Lord, how many more chapters in this book yeah, you're right. as I'm reading it? Well, I got into the minor prophets and I finally just said, Lord, please give me the desire to be in your word. And it says here in um, John 14, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And he says it again, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And I believe now that. That's, now you're reading from John. Now that's Jesus speaking at the Last Supper. If you have a red letter Bible, those would be it's words red, of red. It's Jesus, Jesus speaking. Jesus speaking. Okay. Absolutely. And I was asking, I didn't even know I was asking something according to the Lord's will. Of course he wants us in his word. Yes. And he gave it to me unbelievably so. I do not think, and that was probably a decade ago, I have not been a day without reading something Amen. out of scripture, the Bible, whatever it is. Um but obviously, so, so you mean the Bible now has become more important than the newspaper? Everything. The we don't subscribe to any newspapers anymore. Uh, we don't need any, you know, bird cage liners. So yeah. we do not Amen. prescribe any more to them. Um, we block out the news for the most part, and the world is very much less important to me. Um, somebody had just texted me the other day about a situation going on, and I, I just couldn't help but say, listen, that's not my battle. My battle is to help people, you know, lead people to the Lord. My battle is to preach the gospel. Yeah. And I have like just, f I forego those things of the world. I don't worry about the things that are happening because it's not going to stop. Those things that are happening now, um, whatever it may be, if you want me to go into specific detail, I will, but whatever it may be is not my concern anymore. And I'm not lazy about it. I'm not, I mean, I used to do marches for America and I used to love that stuff, but now I am like sold out on why wouldn't I tell somebody, I think the greatest form of love is telling somebody about Jesus Christ and eternal life. So, that so, is the greatest form of love. So I, I was looking at um, some Bible verses, you know, to yeah. come and, and have a New Year's show. And I was uh, want everyone to have a blessed New Year. And we saw that the, the key to the blessed New Year is to have new life. Amen. Uh, like uh, the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, he says, if any man, male or female, any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Uh, the old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And there's a new life, there's a new spiritual life where you see things differently than you saw them before. Your eyes are opened. It's like God gives you spiritual insight, and another light went on to seeing things. Mm -hmm. And you have these new desires. You have the new heart that you spoke of Amen. in Ezekiel 36. Amen. And and God resets your heart, makes it soft. Like you said, Kevin, one of the first, that new heart loves God. Something we never did before. I got to admit, I, I didn't love God uh, until my didn't new birth. Didn't even think about him, did you? No, I didn't, didn't think about him much no. at all. No. I was too busy trying to get... Yep scratch and claw through life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, what you were saying, I was just thinking of Mark four nineteen, mm -hmm. uh, and it was a parable that Jesus gave about the, the seed and the sower. And, um, the, the seed is the word of God, Yes, but the, there's all these different people that how they reacted to that word, how they respond to how they respond. Yeah, and sure. What you were just saying that you were probably studying for school. I oh, mean, yeah. it's not, not something easy and it's really difficult, you know, just book after book after book study and it's, sure. it's, it's difficult. But there's other things too that are the cares of the world yep. mm -hmm. and the deceitfulness of riches. You know, some people get so wound up trying to get rich yes, and, and uh, the lusts of other things enter in, choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. Mm -hmm. so, and so the word of God then, had, there's no place for it because there's there's no time. I'm busy doing but these other it's things. It's not going to take root right. in that kind of 
ground but because when, he's talking about ground. But when God gives that heart, when that seed did penetrate in one of those parables somewhere in there, the seed did penetrate into somebody's heart. That's right. And when it got inside that heart, then it brought forth fruit. Did he say fruit? Uh, yes, and it did yield fruit. And, uh, and then he said, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. So, so because some people, not only do they have a stony heart, they don't have an ear yeah, right. that's interested in hearing. They kind of plug right? their ears. I mean, I've yeah. actually seen them do this. Stick their fingers <laughs> in their ears. Their in their ears. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't they, want to hear. They actually stick their fingers in their ears <laughs> yeah. or, you know, uh, avert their eyes. <laughs> it's oh, like, I don't want to see that. It's like Frank and Marie Barone. Yeah. And, and everybody <laughs> loves Raymond. It's like not talking to each other. But so, so when, the, when it does get in there, though, and it brings forth the fruit, it's God speaking of, because it's a parable, Jesus is uh, telling so he's giving an earthly story with a spiritual meaning to it he means spiritual fruit and part of the spiritual fruit is the the new love for god and i think another love comes in too has god's love comes in because i think what's happening is you're allowing god's love in your heart and then you're loving god back mm -hmm. for the new life he just gave you and and you know the difference when it happens at, at the same time as god love come in for you He's able to, through you, help you love others better. Absolutely. Without and, a doubt. And now, were you a mom at the time when you got saved? Were you yes, a mother? Yes, I, I was a mom. Okay. Yes, I was working full so time. You noticed a difference a in, in the mothering? and the In the way I took care of my sons. Yeah, Absolutely. Amen. Without a doubt. And I even said to them, well, you must be happy about this. I definitely <laughs> react a little bit better to when you do things wrong. I'm not screaming off, <laughs> screaming at you. <laughs> you know, I'm a little more calm about these things. They didn't yeah. understand the change. And I mean, but I you did. really did. Yeah. And even people at my work understood the change. They, and it was amazing. It was, it's supernatural. And Amen. it's God's, it's God's indwelling spirit and uh, just, I love for I love that he did that for me. Amen. And uh, I can't imagine life without him. And, and it's exciting. The Christian life is not boring. It's very exciting. And neither is this book. Now you're confident <laughs> that yeah. what he did for you, he'll do for someone else. Absolutely. Worse than me. And I was uh, pretty for bad. Anyone. He'll do for anyone. For, he'll do it for think. anybody. Amen. And uh, you know, the funny thing is, is I, when I wasn't saved, I wasn't even aware of my sin. Right, right. Not even aware of my sin. Right. And w I got saved. I knew I needed a, a savior. And when I got saved, it, my sin became very apparent. And it was almost like you go through a point of like, wow, I can't believe I was like that. Or I wrote those things or I said those things, well, you know, you're but the Lord, in darkness, yeah, you don't have to, to clean Bible, yourself up. Jesus. Yeah. I love that about yeah, He's the you light have, of the world. Amen. And he you, lights the world yeah. so that you can see yourself. You come from a point of darkness yeah. into a light. And it's beautiful because yeah. you don't have to clean yourself up for this. Listener, you don't have to clean yourself up for him. You just come to him. And as soon as you start moving towards him, he knows and he's there immediately. And I know, I know he did that for me. So I just pray that the Lord draws you. Yeah. That, that's, that's one of the things we, we like to talk about here on the What is Truth program. We were talking about about six weeks ago here is one of the highlight chapters in the Bible is uh, Genesis 1, where God comes and he begins creating. You know, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And then in the latter part of the chapter, he makes Adam and Eve. He makes the man and the woman, male and female, and then he allows them to have children. But but the thing is, as the creator, it said at one point when he took the dust of the ground and he breathed into it, the man became a living soul. And all of us that are alive, he is our creator. Mm -hmm. And and so as the creator, he has an interest in the creature that he made. So even before you mm -hmm. were saved, before I was saved, he had an interest in us getting mm -hmm. to know him. Mm -hmm. And today he has an interest in others, which is why you and I tell others, but Kevin never says a word to anybody. Oh, yeah. No, we're just, He's <laughs> real quiet. <laughs> we're, just, we're just joking, just Kevin. Just kidding. <laughs> well, I was thinking of Ephesians 1, mm -hmm. uh, 13 and 18 that you were talking about. You didn't even see mm -hmm. that you were sinning. You didn't You not, didn't not get it. You, but, uh, because the things I did were acceptable and, you know, in right, but society, but, but until as a norm. He, until he enlightened you, yes, 
when you got saved, that's what oh, he did. He opens eyes your eyes. Wide yeah. open. In, in uh, verse 13, Ephesians 1, 13, in whom also you trusted after that. After what? After you heard the word of truth, mm -hmm. the gospel of salvation, like I was saying before, when you were unsaved, you'd mm -hmm. read this book. You know, I show people stuff in the book mm -hmm. and I say, what does it say? And they can't even repeat to you sure. Mm -hmm. what it says Sure, right. because they don't understand it. Right. That, that in whom after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, Amen. which is the earnest of, of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Mm -hmm. uh, and then down in verse 18... It says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance mm -hmm. in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward, who believe. You must be a believer. Amen. It's yes. not to unbelievers. Yes. If you're wondering why you read the Bible and you're not getting something out of it, it's mm -hmm. like maybe you're not spiritually alive well kevin in verse 13 you started right there yes and you were talking about uh it, paul is writing to these people at a little church in the region of ephesus that's a real town that was in asia minor and a little church had started there and he was saying to them uh, I, the thing i know about you is you guys first trusted in christ in whom you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So the gospel is the good news that you can be saved. But before that, when you, Teresa, and I were going to a Catholic church, what type of church were you going to growing up? Presbyterian. Presbyterian. Lost Presbyterian. They didn't give us the gospel of Not salvation. Not in the Presbyterian. <laughs> they, were, they, they wouldn't know it if it hit them in the face. I mean... My, my mom was reading, started reading the Bible herself, yeah. went to the pastor... And said, what is it? Oh, don't worry about that. That's just, you know, that's just an allegory. <laughs> Everything in there to him was an allegory. Yes. Um, the At least the older guy, he retired when I was very young. I was, you know, I don't know. I Just a kid, elementary school yeah. age, going to Sunday school and all that. The first guy, at least, believed the Bible. The second guy that replaced him, you know, he probably graduated in the late 60s from seminary. He didn't even believe the Bible okay. in a Presbyterian church. Didn't believe the Bible because he got taught out of it mm -hmm. in, in cemetery. I mean, cemetery. <laughs> yeah, right. That's that's a good name yeah. for it. So, you know, he, my mom would ask him questions and he he couldn't even answer them because he didn't believe these words. Because the He's gospel of, of salvation is, is the key. I remember one of the first things Jesus said was, I've come to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. I've come to preach the, the good tidings. I mean... Uh, I'm just going back to Jesus's first sermon in uh, Luke chapter four. And uh, this was the first sermon and they delivered to Jesus the book of the prophet Isaiah or Isaiah. And he opened the book and he said, uh, it is written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, the Lord hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, sent me to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight uh, to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I mean, the year that you get saved, that's that's the year we all remember. For me, it was 1993. You remember you? 1972. Do you remember you? I December. Yeah, I don't know exactly. I think it was when I was 39 years old. So that, that that's me been. too at 39. What yeah. year would that be? Don't so, don't tell us. No, it's okay. You know, I, don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's interesting too that she didn't know what was in the past. But these uh, verses in Ephesians 1 yeah. says that there's something else coming. Mm -hmm. Right. That that we could know the hope of our calling. What does that mean? He reveals to us the future too. Correct. He reveals, he gives us something in the future. He gives us an inheritance. You right. Know? I, I, I said on the radio show here before, I think, the story about the, the people with all this food and they bring all this stuff and they're serving everybody and they tell them, don't put the forks away because the dessert's coming. Okay. <laughs> and, but but I think about, you know, I'm, I'm getting old. I'm not young anymore. <laughs> I didn't want I'm, to say yeah. anything. <laughs> well, but someday, you know, okay, it's yeah. like I have a hope in heaven yes. for sure. Mm -hmm. yes. But as I get older and older and older in the Lord, 
I see so much he does for me. Yeah. It, it's not this guy right here. You know, he has all this stuff for us. He has this calling for us. Yeah. He's got something He's for you. He's got a great plan. He's got something to bless yes. you with. Mm -hmm. And maybe when you're first saved, you can't even see that. But as you mature more and more, yeah. you're like, you know, it's like uh, God mm -hmm. gives us gifts. Yeah. And he knows. And even before we're saved, I believe he has his hand protecting us. You know, devil, devil sometimes is like, I want to kill that one. You know, but he says, no, 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 that one's mine. You might not be saved right now, but God knows those that are his yeah. and who will be his. And he's done that in my life before well, I got mine saved. Too. Mine I, too. I, I should have been dead. I don't know how many times, you know, because no I'm a <laughs> lunatic Irishman, right? <laughs> but, uh, but as I grow, it's like, you know what? I, he gave me a big voice yeah. for yeah. a reason. Amen. I mean, I'm, I can get very loud. You know, yeah, I right. never understood that before. Now I understand why. And I love I that verse. I think you like the Psalm. velvet fog. Well, <laughs> the velvet. yeah. Okay. Psalm, Psalm 40 or 41 verse 1. I, I forget which one it is, but it says, my tongue is the pen of a ready, ready writer. writer. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. You know, Amen. And, and on top of that, if the guy used to talk like this, that is sticking pen. Right? So he took care of that. Mm -hmm. and, and people will say, what? You had a speech impediment? Yeah, I had a speech impediment. Isn't I went amazing? to speech therapy. And now yeah. you're the, the, you know? the, the evangelist Until all you, over the country. Until amen, you amen. learn to speak so for saying, the Lord. He's, he's, got, he's got a plan for you. Yeah. But you have to believe him. You have to follow mm -hmm. him. You you have to <clears throat> be converted, right? Yes, right. And people that are not converted, they're not going to get all this stuff. So what we need in the new year, mm -hmm. if, if you haven't had it yet, is God wants to give you the conversion, which is a new birth. Amen. It's a spiritual yes. birth. You have some verses there. I see you want to well, share with no, us. Please it's, it's, do. I want to go back to my, um, like just a, a little bit of my go testimony. Right it was 2009 about when I got saved, but you know, and I look back and you know, I don't have that exact date or anything like that. I just know what I was and I know who I am now. Amen. And, you know and what that's happened. the difference. And you know what happened. Yeah. You don't have the date, but you know what happened. I know right? it happened. Yeah. I know that I know that I know. Yeah. And oftentimes we just go to, you know, I even, we even go door to door. I go to door to door with some ladies just preaching the gospel. And, <laughs> you know, we, we, we get right to it. We're like, we just want to, you know, we're just here to talk about your eternity. And do you know where you're going for sure when you die? And a lot of times people don't even see, they don't read their, their Bible at all. Most people don't read their Bible. It's very rare that we come across a saved soul. Um, we come across religious people, but very rare we come across a saved soul. And we point to these things. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Why wouldn't you want to look into those things? Oh, gosh. I mean, really, you can know that you have eternal life and that you don't have to die and go to hell. It's in this book. This book is beautiful. So many people read so many books in their lifetime. I know people who've read a book a week. You've read a lot of books, right? And I have literally ditched everything except for this book. This book will keep you occupied, by the way, this new year, folks, <laughs> if you are, and it is a big book. The Bible is a big book. Amen. And there are 66 books mm -hmm. within the book. Uh, and so it's a lot of work. If you were to read the Bible in a year, you've more, read more than a book a week. You, you read 66 books this year. Amen. But, but what God wants to do is he just doesn't want you to read it as a literary exercise. Right. He wants you to read it to get to know him mm -hmm. and get to know his son and to get the blessing of the new birth. Amen. And that's, that's, that's God's desire. He, mm -hmm. he wants you. Jesus told a religious man one time, he said, you must be born again. It's not the religion that's going to get you to heaven. My father is a spirit. Heaven is spiritual. Your physical birth was good for the physical planet. You need to be born of the spirit. And this book tells you how to do it. Uh, Teresa, when I was in Catholic school, I never heard them talk to me about the new birth. No, and I being never born heard again. the term born again. How about in the Presbyterian never. church? Were they doing that with you? No. 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 You're shaking your head. Okay. <laughs> no. Davy and Goliath. <laughs> <laughs> Davy and Goliath talk about that. Right. Yeah. Right. And what, what this book, see, for, for 10 years, I was more of like social gospel. 
right? I was more about, I like, as soon as I got saved, I did a trip to Thailand to help out with anti-human trafficking efforts, Okay, right? In a Christ-centered organization. It was great, but I have come to the realization that the most important thing is getting people the gospel. Now yeah. they do. The, the girls got saved that were out there, but oh, my most important thing is getting the gospel out because, but it was the, it's, I'm sorry. As soon as I got my hands on this King James Holy Bible, I speak now. I speak the words of God. I speak the words so of you life. You said the first time you went to that church, it was an NIV you had, an which IV means a, a new international version. Correct. But then someone got in your hands the old King James Bible and you noticed the difference. A major difference in mm -hmm. what it did to me and what it has me doing. I am out on the streets with you guys now. I'm holding up signs because I know how powerful the word of God is. Just for somebody to read the signs that I have, they have one little scripture on it. And those words of God are so powerful. Yes. You read that and it, you know, he can hide it in your heart for so long. He could hide it in your brain, in your mind, and then bring it to remembrance at that right specific moment sure. that the Lord intended uh, for you to be saved. Like, like for this week. Amen. Now we were talking about earlier on the show, folks, and, and here it is. And, and again, happy new year, January 1st, 2023. But in the past week, we were all in the Western New York area with this major blizzard. Yeah. And a lot of people were trapped they were in the in, vehicles. In, in a car. Yep. And the car ran out of gas and the yeah. blizzard, nobody could get to them. And, and a number of people died in yes. their vehicle. And, and that's horrible. And yet the beautiful thing about the gospel mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ is if you were in that vehicle and someone had shown you a scripture sign <laughs> a week ago and you were thinking about, I'm too busy, I'm doing my shopping, I got this, I can't think of that now. And now you're alone in that car. And you're beginning to go, and God knows you're beginning to go, and he draws near to you. And and he says, remember that scripture verse, and you think on that seed, because, Kevin, you talked about the sower sowing seed. Mm -hmm. This is the word of God. And that person, just at that last moment, was Amen. to say, Lord, remember me. I believe what I heard. They could be saved. And, and at the Amen. last moment, and by this the is word, the, just by is, the word of God, and and this is the gospel of salvation. Right. Now, just by now, the word now, of God. If if I were a, an old Catholic, <laughs> and I hadn't had communion in three weeks, and I had committed some sins, and I hadn't made confession, and I died in that car, what can I do? If if uh, some other works that I need to do from some religious system, but the power of this gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation in the, in the twinkling of an eye, in a moment. The word, the word of God is quick Amen. and powerful. Yeah, yes, go, right? The Bible says Sharper being born again, not of corruptible seed, mm -hmm. but by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So that person in the car, one little verse, mm -hmm. that's all it takes. And because opening you know their it's heart. Spiritual conversion, that the Holy Spirit comes to that person and knocks on the door of your heart. Sure. Jesus talks about knocking on the door. If you open up, if that person opens up, that's what he wants. So that person in that car, uh, just driving here today, I saw one of those cars off in the ditch mm -hmm. and it finally was a little bit uncovered today, but they still haven't been able to fish it out. And I'm thinking if there's a person in there and, and there they are the last few moments of life and they think on the good news of the gospel, Mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ, which is the power of God to salvation. And they say, Everyone Lord, remember it. me. It could be the same as that yep. one on the cross Amen. that looked over to Jesus at the last moment. Last moment. That's the power of this gospel. Amen. It is. Yeah. It's beautiful. That's why you tell Thank people. You. Amen. That's why you tell them. <laughs> in a moment like that, where yeah, you're trapped that, in your and car changes, and you can't get out. That changes people. You mm -hmm. did all this other stuff. I used to do other stuff too. And then yeah. I got to the point where I'm like, wait a second. Yeah. You know what? If they get saved, yeah. I don't have to teach them. That this is bad, this is good. The Lord will This show other him. thing is bad because the Holy Spirit comes to them and he says right. it would, will teach you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's his job is the Holy Spirit. So if they get converted, right. you don't have to teach them not to live ungodly. Exactly. They'll already know. You now, don't even have to play Holy not. Ghost. Right. You let you, the you Holy don't have Ghost to, You don't do have it. to beat them up. You that's don't have right. To, you, know, you don't have to hit them over the head gonna, with your Bible. I'm going to wrap you with my, with the <laughs> calendar on your knuckles <laughs> yeah. in Catholic school <laughs> yeah. because you're not that. paying attention. That's right. You get right? them the gospel. Because God does the work. Yeah. You know, and, and I had all these guys that um, I used to try to tell them, hey, we got to go and we got to go and preach. And I used to chase them. You know what? They run away from me. Sure, sure, sure. And I got to the point I never see in the Bible. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. where God says to go compel people to go witness. I mm -hmm. show them. The Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So I show mm -hmm. them all the verses, but you know what? Their heart wasn't in it. Mm -hmm. and, and then when I finally got to a point, I said, okay, God, what do you say here? You say to pray to the Lord of the harvest, not to go and grab them by the collar. Sure. And I'm always go, come on, let's go here. Hey, let's go there. Let's, let's mm -hmm. do this. You know, Just they speak. don't want to. Yeah. So they don't. So God brought all these guys along Yes. that I didn't have to take the Bible and show them we're supposed to do this. You know why? Mm -hmm. The reason, the same reason why I started witnessing on the corner. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> this is the last thing I want to do. Stand there in front of people <laughs> and lift up my voice, become the center of attention because I'm an introvert. <laughs> yeah, an introvert. So I didn't want to do it, but you know what drove me to do it? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, I knew it was right. That's right. I knew it was right. The Holy Spirit, I was under conviction. Okay. So God sent people that are convicted. He's able to do that work. Amen. We can. You can't Amen. force somebody to do something. Yeah. And and I'm, I'm going to bet... Uh, although I'm not supposed to, that in this new year of 2023, you're going to do more of that and take that gospel right. to the streets. Amen. And that's what's needed. Look, we thank you for joining us on this week's, uh, the New Year's edition of the What is Truth, a radio show. God wants you, your creator wants you to have a blessed new year. And he wants to do it by giving you new life, spiritual life through the new birth. He wants to put inside of you a new heart and he's the great physician and that new heart will reset with a new love toward God. He'll put in you a new mind that will allow you to have new thoughts and attitudes that are godly and blessed, new revelations giving you discernment, new songs about God and Jesus that will bring joy, new mercies renewing your strength every day and the New Testament which is superior to the old. If you get a chance, start in the New Testament, read John, read Matthew, and God's going to write a new name for you in heaven, and he'll reveal it to you, and he's building a new home for you for all of eternity, all courtesy of the new birth given by the Lord Jesus Christ. May you have a blessed new year. See you again next week, and until we meet with you, do like Jesus said, search the scriptures, and you'll know.